What's up guys, my name is Ace, and Modern Warfare 3 brought a bunch of minor changes to handling and mobility, as well as visual recoil of weapons, and in today's video, I wanted to do a direct side-by-side -side comparison with various elements like this compared to Modern Warfare 2 to see just how much they changed here. And we have a bunch of things to cover here, so let's just dive right into it, and let's start it off with mantling. This is something they did do some work on, however, when you're looking at a low mantle, where you just mantle over a concrete barrier like this, for instance, it looks like nothing actually changed here with the standard mantle. You can shoot the entire time in both games, and the timing looks to be pretty much identical. Similarly, I was quite surprised to see with a high mantle, where you have to grab the ledge above your head and then pull yourself up, once again, this appears to be essentially identical here. There's no real noticeable difference. However, there is a noticeable difference when we're talking about multiple consecutive mantles. If you want to do a double mantle here, you can see you get your gun up and ready to fire noticeably sooner in Modern Warfare 3, and that's without the climbing boots perk, which improves your mantling speed. And with this, you can see you have your gun up significantly faster when using that perk, and Modern Warfare 2 doesn't have any perk like this that will help your mantling in any way. Fast hands, for instance, doesn't do anything for you. So while you may not notice any difference when mantling over one single object in Modern Warfare 3 compared to Modern Warfare 2, you do have the ability to chain mantles together, and we have the option to improve our mantling with a perk, unlike in Modern Warfare 2. Next, let's get into sliding and slide cancelling, because this is another big change that came with Modern Warfare 3 that really does make a noticeable difference. And starting it off just looking at our base slide to see if there's really much of a difference here. Honestly, nothing too crazy. It looks like you do get a little more momentum, a little more speed, and possibly a little more distance out of Modern Warfare 3 slide. But the timings appear to be essentially identical if you don't do anything to cancel your slide. And this is where the big difference comes out in Modern Warfare 3. We have the ability to cancel our slide, unlike in Modern Warfare 2. And this allows you to, first up, recover from a slide faster and get back into a sprinting animation. You can see here, you will start that sprint animation again noticeably sooner in Modern Warfare 3 when utilizing a slide cancel. However, that may not be a perfectly fair comparison because we didn't even have the ability to slide cancel in Modern Warfare 2. So in this area, I also wanted to briefly compare to Modern Warfare 2019. And in this case, Many of you guys have already noticed there is a little bit of a delay on that recovery for Modern Warfare 3, and therefore we can't get back into a sprint after a slide cancel quite as fast as we could back in Modern Warfare 2019. So it seems like they're really aiming for a middle ground here, where they didn't want the slide cancel to be too crazy, but they wanted the option to be available for the players that like that. Next, let's have a look at our slide to fire times to see whether or not you can slide aggressively into gunfights more effectively than Modern Warfare 2. And it turns out, even without using slide cancel, we do have a slightly faster slide to fire time. You can see I got about two shots off in Modern Warfare 3 before I could get a single shot off in Modern Warfare 2. And you can do this even faster if you implement slide cancelling. You can get aim down sight and firing noticeably faster than in Modern Warfare 2. So this will allow players to use sliding a lot more effectively as an aggressive tool. And we won't have to rely quite as much on jump shots for that. Now for those that may be curious, I also did a comparison here with Modern Warfare 2019. And it turns out Modern Warfare 3 is a little bit faster in this area based on my tests. So while the recovery and getting back into a sprint is faster in Modern Warfare 2019, getting your shots off is actually a little bit faster in Modern Warfare 3. Now finally, within this really similar section here, I wanted to take a look at Dive to Fire, and it turns out here, Modern Warfare 3 hasn't changed at all from Modern Warfare 2. We can get aim down sight and firing in the exact same amount of time. Next, let's have a look at jump shotting and bunny hopping, and the first thing I wanted to point out is we still have that exact same aim down sight penalty if you're aiming down sight while in the air. So there is still that punishment for jump shotting in Modern Warfare 3, same as Modern Warfare 2. However, I do want to point out there was a leaked perk back in the day. This hasn't been officially confirmed and it's not available in the beta, but there is a leaked perk that suggests that we will be able to cut down on that aim down sight penalty while jump shotting if you're using that perk. Additionally, I wanted to point out it appears bunny hopping is the same as Modern Warfare 2 as well, which means it's just not really viable. And what I mean by a bunny hop is not just the first jump, it's the consecutive jumps after the first jump takes place. When your feet land after the first jump, you don't maintain any of that lateral momentum, and therefore it's kind of pointless to try to bunny hop in this game. Next, I was really curious about strafe speeds, and while we only have access to a couple guns, and therefore this isn't a perfect comparison, we're gonna have to see more at launch. I just did a basic test here with the Striker versus the Lockman sub in Modern Warfare 2, and unfortunately our base strafe speed is actually just a little bit slower in Modern Warfare 3 with this gun. 
However, unlike Modern Warfare 2, we have a perk that allows us to increase our strafe speed, and this is the Stalker Boots, and when you put this on, now we get a 15% boost to our strafe speed, and this allows us to be a little bit faster than the base Lockman sub in Modern Warfare 2. Keep in mind with these tests, I didn't use any attachments at all, so this is something we'll have to take a deeper look at down the road once we gain access to all of the attachments. Now on the bright side, I continued my testing here with an assault rifle, and I used the MTZ-556 compared to the ISO Hemlock, and I chose the Hemlock because its strafe speed is almost bang on average for the assault rifles in Modern Warfare 2. And I was pleasantly surprised to see that the MTZ in Modern Warfare 3 is noticeably faster, and this is without the Stalker boots. So I'm hoping this means that the assault rifles are going to have a bit of a faster strafe speed in Modern Warfare 3 compared to Modern Warfare 2. But of course, again, we need to gain access to more attachments and more weapons to work out averages and potentials with this. Next, just a couple of miscellaneous things I wanted to test. One annoying thing I found with Modern Warfare 2 is the amount of time it takes to throw down a munitions box and then collect the munitions from it. Unfortunately, it appears this didn't change at all for Modern Warfare 3. And another thing that was really annoying within the first several months of Modern Warfare 2, but they ended up speeding this up, was the amount of time it takes to call in streaks. More specifically, the streaks where you just pull out a smartphone and hit a button, so UAVs, counter UAVs for instance. Thankfully, they did speed this up partway through the life cycle of Modern Warfare 2, and it turns out in Modern Warfare 3, the timings are exactly the same as the current state of Modern Warfare 2, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think it is in a reasonable state now, whereas previously it was just way too slow. Now, finally for this video, I did want to do a comparison with the visual recoil between weapons in Modern Warfare 2 compared to Modern Warfare 3. And the main reason is this is a pretty big complaint from Modern Warfare 2. The gun seems to jump around a lot in your hands. The reticle seems to bounce around within the frame of the optic a lot as well, making it a lot more difficult to track what you're shooting, especially for mouse and keyboard players. And I wanted to see if they cut down on this, so I took the MTC-556 and compared it to the Tempest Razorback because these have identical rates of fire. And I'll just keep playing this clip over and over again so you guys can look at the side-by-side -side comparison. The first thing I'm noticing is the gun is bouncing around a lot more in Modern Warfare 2 compared to Modern Warfare 3. Additionally, in Modern Warfare 2, the red dot tends to deflect a lot farther away from the center of the frame of the optic, which can make tracking targets while firing full auto a lot more difficult. And this is just due to the movement and rotation of the weapon model in your hands. Effectively, they don't have it properly seated in their shoulder in this case. And looking at the frame at which there was maximum deflection from the center of the optic, you can see there isn't much deflection at all in Modern Warfare 3, and this is much more comparable to what we saw back in Modern Warfare 2019. And I think this is great because it can be really hard to track where exactly that dot is as you're firing full auto and this means that you can generally just try to keep your target toward the center of the frame of your optic and you should be landing your shots effectively. Additionally, when it comes to visual recoil, another thing that happens in Modern Warfare 2 a lot is the muzzle smoke can take up a good portion of your screen. If we look from one frame to the next, you can see just how much of that haze covers almost your entire screen. And this is even in a darker situation where I don't have sunlight behind me, so it can get much worse than this. Whereas in Modern Warfare 3, just like Modern Warfare 2019, it seems like that muzzle smoke and the gases that are released, it's much more localized on the bottom right of your screen. And therefore you don't have like a general haze as you're shooting at your target. It. So it's going to feel a lot less like a strobe light is hitting you in the face as you're firing your gun, especially in brighter situations. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for just a bunch of side-by-side -side comparisons between Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. Overall, I do think they've made a lot of nice, subtle improvements that really add up to improving the experience overall. I do feel a lot more free with my movements, largely because we have the ability to cancel certain animations. I didn't even touch on reload canceling here. It doesn't really make sense to compare it side by side, but we do have the ability to reload cancel in Modern Warfare 3. We can chain mantles faster together. We've got less visual recoil, potentially faster stray speeds on assault rifles, although more testing is needed in the future, and perks that help in many of these areas as well that we didn't have access to in Modern Warfare 2. Now individually these changes may be minor but add them all together and it really does change the experience at least in my opinion. Now of course these are just my thoughts and I'd love to hear what you guys think about all of these little changes that they've made in those comments down below. Do you guys think these are welcome and noticeable changes for the most part or not so much? Just let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video a like rating is always appreciated and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.